Speaker, in the name of Rona Mackay, on men who have sex with men, blood donations. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate press the request to speak buttons now? And I call on Rona Mackay to open the debate. Ms Mackay, seven minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm delighted that for the first time we are debating this hugely important issue in the Chamber and I'm grateful for the great level of cross-party support my motion on men who have sex with men being treated equally in regard to blood donations has had. At our party's autumn conference, the First Minister said that the key message she wanted to promote above all else was inclusion. And that's exactly what my motion is about, equality and inclusion. Scotland has led the way on equality in recent years and our party has an unblemished track record promoting equal rights. In 2005, discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender was banned. In 2009, same-sex couples were allowed to adopt children and in 2014, we legalised same-sex marriage. As the law stands, no men who have had sex with men in the previous 12 months or women who have had sex with men who have had sex with men may give blood within the 12 months deferral period. In my view, these rules are archaic and have their origins in the 1980s, when little was known of the risk of HIV, the modes of contracting it, and the prevalence within specific communities. Presiding officer, in the debate on adoption in the chamber last week, I spoke of close friends of mine who are in a same-sex marriage who have just gone through the adoption process. How will these men who are in a loving, monogamous relationship explain to their child why they're being treated differently when it comes to giving blood? Shockingly, if their child ever needed a blood transfusion and they were a match, they would not be allowed to save their own child's life in an emergency. In the name of equality, it's time to end this discriminatory process and base donor eligibility on risk, regardless of sexual orientation. The current rules around blood donation make no reference to someone's personal risk of being a carrier of HIV and a promiscuous straight person would be able to donate blood whilst a monogamous gay or bisexual man would not. I believe Scotland has a chance to address one major area where inequality still exists and at the same time address a chronic lack of uptake in blood donation and the coming forward of new donors to meet our demand for blood products. Over the last 10 years, there's been a 40% drop in the number of people giving blood and current figures suggest only 4% of people in the UK regularly donate. Yet 6,000 blood transfusions are needed in the UK every day. Stonewall Scotland believes that excluding thousands of gay and bisexual men who may safely be eligible to donate threatens the blood supply, which one in four people will rely on at some point in their life. The fact is that the breakdown of heterosexual people with HIV is rising, and the eligibility rules take no account of this. Also, the regulation on men who have sex with men donating is based on self-declaration, and it's incredibly simple to hide sexual activity in order to give blood. Of course, there must be stringent donor selection criteria aimed at protecting donors and recipients of blood transfusions. No one would ever argue otherwise, but I believe these should not be based on sexual orientation, but on participation in high-risk behaviour. The public need to have confidence in the transfusion system and it's important to stress that all blood is screened at the highest level. That said, the statistics show that only one bag of blood has tested positive for HIV in the past four years. So that puts what we're talking about in some perspective. We need to introduce a non-discriminatory risk assessment policy that will judge each individual equally, whether they're straight, bisexual or gay. The current rules were put in place in 2011 after the Advisory Committee on the Safety of Blood Tissues and Organs, SABTO, undertook a review of donation rules. SABTO recommended a reduction of the lifetime ban to a one-year deferment for men who have sex with men, and this recommendation was accepted. Presiding officer, I believe Scotland needs to go further to ensure that all people can donate blood based on their personal risk of blood-borne virus transmission, not to their sexual orientation. Whilst matters relating to health are devolved to the Scottish Parliament, policy relating to blood donation has so far been in line with approaches in England and Wales, following the guidance provided by SABTO. In June 2016 at Westminster, 
an all-party parliamentary group, APPG, on blood donation began an inquiry into the current rules. This debate is happening alongside a review by SAPTO into the blood donor selection criteria. Stuart Macdonald, MP for Glasgow South, recently chaired an evidence session in Westminster on the issue, and they're due to make a recommendation early in 2017. The SNBTS could determine its own policies and restrictions for men who have sex with men, but it would be un un unlikely to be willing to implement a policy that was contrary to safety of blood tissues and organs evidence-based guidance. However, in 2011, the Northern Irish Government chose not to implement SABTO's proposed change to the deferral criteria for this group and maintained a ban. Wales, England and Scotland all moved a 12-month deferral period after the last MSN sexual contact. Northern Ireland subsequently changed its criteria this year to fall into line with the rest of the United Kingdom, which I believe sets a precedent for autonomy. Presiding officer, to highlight this great anomaly, gay men can join the bone marrow register, donate organs and stem cells, and everyone goes through the same health and suitability checks. Your sexuality doesn't matter one bit. Whatever your age and whatever your health or sexual orientation, you can donate. Argentina, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Spain, Italy and Mexico are just some of the countries who accept eligible donations not based on sexual orientation. Spain has a deferral period of at least six months after a change of partner for both heterosexual and MSM, with permanent deferral for individuals with multiple sex partners. In Italy, a deferral of four months applies for people who have multiple partners who've had a change in regular partner. I believe that it should be possible to ask donors more detailed questions about their sexual activity, rather than just whether they've had sex with another man in the past year, thereby gaining more accurate information on risk and making the blood surprise safer, which is of paramount importance. Of course, the current law affects, also affects transgender people who want to donate blood, meaning that any man who transitioned to a woman is still classed as an MSN, and therefore not allowed to donate, even though it may have been a number of years since they last identified as being an MSM. I believe that lifting the ban on MSN donating blood and replacing it with a more equal non-discriminatory risk assessment is fairer, particularly since one in three 16 to 24 year olds do not identify as heterosexual. Presiding officer of the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service recently published a document with an updated position on gay blood donation. Within that document, it recognises the principles of kindness and mutual trust expected of all blood donors between the individual and the blood donation service. However, the mutual trust expected by the service is not reflected in the selection and deferral criteria, evident by the fact there is no consideration of the position of thousands of gay and bisexual men in committed relationships where the risk of HIV transmission is negligible. For the sake of equality, Scotland needs to go further to ensure that all people can donate blood based on their personal risk of bloodborne virus transmission, not their sexual orientation. We need to introduce a non-discriminatory risk assessment policy that will judge each individual equally, whether they're straight, bisexual or gay. This would increase the number of much needed donors throughout Scotland. As I mentioned at the beginning of this speech, my motion is about equality and inclusion. And as my colleague Patrick Grady MP recently said at the first APPG blood donation meeting, for many gay men, a 12-month deferral is effectively a lifetime deferral. Even if we lowered the deferral period to a three-month deferral, this is without doubt a discriminatory measure on MSM couples in stable, loving relationships. Presiding officer, this is not equal or inclusive. I say let's go further, Scotland. End this inequality now. Thank you. I call Christina McKelvey to be followed by Patrick Harvey, please. Christina McKelvey.